don't know if I should have a green tea, mint tea, or both. God, I'm gonna go with the green tea, okay? This is tea time. I love those videos where people, they get ready to sit down and talk, but they show you them making their morning tea first. Now, I know there are people out there that would be like, oh, CJ, just, just get over it already. High school was so long ago. Don't you want to, like, move on with your life already? No. I mean, yes, I've already moved on. Okay, let's go. We all experience struggle in life, things that change us forever, you know? Once we experience them, we will never be the same again. We are forever impacted by those traumas. So that's what I believe. You can move past something, but you will never forget the things that changed you forever, you know? That we all go through these struggles to tell other people our stories and that they can hopefully learn from us and just learn how to treat everyone better in the world um, through storytelling, so that's what this is. So yeah, um, where do I even begin? So listen, I was always the person that nobody liked. <laughs> Let's be honest, because I didn't, um, I didn't talk to people. Uh, I acted like I was too good for people, whatever. Okay, whatever. There's not a single person that actually thinks they're better than anyone. It's always insecurity, okay? I don't think I've ever done that. Um, if anything, I was just living in my own little world, not realizing that people were analyzing me so heavily. Uh, my social anxiety originates mostly high school. High school was torture. I remember being alone a lot, that's all I remember. I don't even remember talking to people. And for some reason, this attracted the attention of a lot of people. For some reason, I noticed that I was kind of like the only school loner that everyone started to pick on all of a sudden. They would leave all the others alone. It was almost as if I was the only one that threatened them in some way. One day, um, okay, so my phone starts ringing in class. I shut it off. It goes off again. I shut it off again. I go up to my locker, and whether they realize it or not, every time someone tries to tear you down or make fun of you or embarrass you in front of a large crowd, it is because they are subconsciously trying to tear down your confidence so that they can feel better than you because there's something about you that they want so yes yeah, so that's what i came to the realization of so this guy from my class comes up to me and he says so who was it that kept calling you in there was it your mom no it actually was my mom because <laughs> i mean i didn't have any friends that would call my phone like i already knew that he came up to me he was smirking like the only reason he was coming to talk to me was to make fun of me this happened almost every day he was like oh no it was your mom right it had to be your mom and again i said no it had to be your mom because it's not like anyone else would call you <laughs> and he just started laughing like it was the funniest joke he had ever told what it is is insecurity there was something about himself that he hated so much that he needed to throw it out on the person he knew could take it and no one would defend her he even followed me to my locker which was a secluded area i wasn't aware of all of that at the time i just thought <laughs> Look, it's just another person who hates me and wants to make fun of me today to get a kick out of it. As soon as he left, I started tearing up. But because I was so used to this kind of thing happening, I was able to suppress it. But that's not a good thing because it builds up over the years. It just makes you hate yourself so much and you don't know why, you don't know where it's all coming from, but it's all of this suppressed pain that's making you hate yourself. This suppressed pain that actually comes from other people's actions and words. And I just put on a blank face and continued going through my day without talking to anyone, shutting everyone out, blocking everyone out because I never knew who was going to attack me next. I never knew who because there was always someone and it was always a different person because I was such an easy target. People of all kind, whether they are like really nice people to you, they can still go out there and pick on someone who they believe to be at the bottom of the pyramid and they can still go unload all their insecurities onto that person just to try to make themselves feel better. Regardless of how good of a person you think they are, they can always go seek out the sheep in the crowd and attack that sheep in private. And then they go back to the herd and they act like the sweetest thing when really no one ever finds out about their dark secrets of how they treat others like shit in private because they deep down they are insecure with themselves people who are good at manipulating they're really really good at 
separating the dark part of themselves from the good part. They'll show the good part of themselves to the world, but then there might be like this one person in their life that they treat like absolute shit, a sheep to, to put down, to make themselves feel bigger. But well, guess what happens when that sheep <laughs> starts telling people this is the things that he has said to me, done to me in private when no one else was watching. What happens is nobody believes that sheep because that person is such an angel to everybody else. This is something I've experienced many times. I've always been that sheep, the quiet girl that is too scared to talk to anyone because I'm so terrified of being attacked by people and I'm so used to it. Because I was always that person, I never lost my status as a target and I just kept attracting more and more monsters. Doesn't mean that they are monsters deep down, it just means that we all have somewhat of a monster living inside of us. That monster consists of all of our built up insecurities over the years, all of our pain, trauma. That's why each one of us needs a healthy creative outlet to express that monster so we can let that monster heal so to speak but because i was always the sheep i tended to attract people's monsters and they saw me as a good place to unload their demons unload their insecurities to give themselves an ego boost so that they can go back to society and be the sweetest angel to everybody else when really they were getting their energy from me because i would take it and this is why I have so many stories that so many people have not believed. The thing with people's monsters are they're good at twisting the story because they don't want anyone to know the truth of how they treated you. So they're going to do everything in their power to make you look crazy. So here's what you do. You just tell the truth. You know, people can only put up with their own lies for so long, but you can put up with your own truth forever. I've always known that one day I was going to get out there and just share my story because I feel like a lot of people who feel as though they are sheeps, they never really gain the confidence to get out there and share their stories with others. It's just so important for all of us to share our personal life experience and feelings with others because that is the only way the world will ever truly understand each other. I think it is very important to highlight the monsters that do live in other people. Ignoring them isn't enough. You know, letting them get away with it isn't enough. You have to shed light on the situation and dissect it and make them understand why it is they did what they did to you. Um, and it all goes back to insecurity. So y'all are insecure, what can I say? But I guess that just goes to show how much power I truly do have if I am attracting all of these monsters. There must be something about me that threatens them in some way. So you just gotta look at it that way, right? If people are constantly putting you down, there is something about you that truly threatens them at their core. That means that there is something about you that is so powerful that they are trying their hardest to take away that power for themselves, which is impossible, yet people will never stop trying to do that. Like when they look at you, they truly believe that, oh, she's powerful. Let me just put her down and just hope that that power like bounces out of her and hits me. Like, <laughs> no, that's impossible. That will never happen. If anything, you're going to make that sheep even stronger, stronger willed, strong minded. You're going to make her even more powerful and you are never going to see it coming when she strikes you back, <laughs> you know? So yeah, high school, it was very shitty time. I feel like I'm never gonna make another video about high school, so let's just go all into it. Um, so every time I would go into the bathroom, I would just stare at my face. I was so like disgusted with my own face. There's these three girls who thought they were the shit, right? Like, I don't know why, but that's what they thought. They come into the bathroom all the time, the three of them like, like a pack, and they just like look at me, stare at me, and laugh, make these comments. They would loudly talk to each other about me, right? Oh my god, she's in here again. Like she's always in the bathroom. Oh my god, like what is she doing? I got used to that, so I would be staring at myself in the mirror, like disgusted. I would hear someone about to come in because you know, there was like those two swinging doors. So I had some time to hide. As soon as you hear someone swing open the first door, I would run to the stall and just hide in there because I was scared it was those three girls. This happened. I went to the stall and as soon as they walk in, as if I am literally the only thing on their mind, like I know guys, I'm always on your mind. I get it. That's great. So they, they walk in and they're like, where is she? Where is she? Is she in here? Oh my god. 
oh my god uh, she's not in here oh my god i'm basically a celebrity okay and i'm in the stall and i'm just like like jesus are they ever gonna give it up why are you so obsessed with me so they do their thing they leave i wait a little bit but then i walk out after them and lo and behold they're still in the hallway probably waiting for me like you want a picture you want an autograph i don't know and they're like oh my god she was in the bathroom <laughs> i know right here celebrity for real <laughs> they're kind of far apart in the hallway so one of them is literally shouting to the other one oh my god guess who is in the bathroom and then they turn around they all see me and they're like eh. <laughs> whatever okay it built up over time and made me feel even more and more insecure when looking back i don't know why because i was always so much better than them i was always a better person than them and that's probably why they wanted to tear me down they knew at the core that i was a good person and there was nothing wrong like i never picked on anyone i kept to myself i never reacted to other people picking on me and it bothered them they were jealous. They were 100% jealous of me. But at the time, I didn't realize that, and I didn't know why anyone would be jealous of me. I don't know if this still happens in high school. I swear to God, I honestly don't know. Because once you're out of high school, it's like a hell that you never want to think about. It only happens to the loner kids. That's the thing. So people aren't aware of this enough, because this is something that only happens to loner or loser kids. And those kids grow up, and they're like forever ashamed of how people treated them in high school, that they don't want to talk about it, but it's so important to, you have to. How else is it ever going to stop? This is probably still going on in high schools, and it's so disgusting, it's so disturbing. So we need to talk about it more, so that it becomes stigmatized, so that bullies become disgusted with their own behaviors and it's so unattractive when you are bullying someone all you are doing is projecting out your own insecurities onto that person it is literally insecurity vomit how disgusting is that why would you want to showcase all of your pain and trauma all of your insecurities to the world go find a healthy like creative outlet go write a song go read a book uh, go watch a movie. I don't know, man. Just do anything else, but vomit your own insecurities onto other people. Anyway, that's the end of that. Peace.